Hi, my name is Kathy Hattrick Anderson, and today I want to talk a little bit about how the bit affects the horse's behavior and the effects that it has on the bars of the horse's mouth. This here is Bucky and Bucky's brother. So we just put the bit in our horse's mouth um, and we kind of just set it and forget it. We don't think about uh, what it's doing inside here once we uh, get on our horse. Uh, I rode with bits most of my life and used all kinds and I wish I had uh, known what I was doing because uh, I punished a lot of horses very severely you know if they're misbehaving and give them a crank here or whatever because I didn't know what this looked like so I just want to show you a little bit the effect this has. The tongue comes over here and lays on the bars of the horse's mouth and the root of the tongue is way back here if you kind of picture a cow's tongue. You know, it's very long and it actually overlaps these bars. These are knife edge, like a butter knife. So what happens is we lay the bit on top of the tongue and the horse, to alleviate this pain of his tongue being pinched between the bit and sometimes the chin strap, what he'll do is he'll retract his tongue, he'll put it over the bit. Uh, sometimes they'll loll their tongue out to the side all in effort to relieve that pressure that this bit is putting on the tongue. Now when they retract it, now the bit is just on bone. This is covered by a thin layer of skin, much like your shin bone. So it still hurts. It just hurts a little bit less by retracting it. So we'll do stuff like tie the horse's mouth shut um, to try and get him to accept the bit. Okay. Uh, Dr. Cook studied 74 different horse uh, skulls, the jaw bones, in four different museum collections and he found that 55 of them had bone spurs. That's why I had to get Bucky's brother because I could talk about a bone spur but until you see it, it's very sharp edge here. So that's a bone spur and 55 of those horses, they were five years and older, uh, had bone spurs and so the incidence of bone spurs in these horses that were ridden um, was 74 percent. That's a high number and the actual number is probably higher because some of those horses were feral and had never had a bit in their mouth. So um, a lot of times we don't know what's going on here. If you can see this poor guy, he had a lot of serious issues going on here um, and they're just trying to get along. You know, they're not trying to be bad but when we try to uh, you know, rate their speed they're having a hard time listening because we're using metal. A horse is a highly sensitive animal and he really doesn't need metal to steer him. And where did this bit lie on this horse's mouth? It lied right on those bone spurs and hitting the first cheek teeth. It should have hurt, hit the first cheek teeth on the bottom but they're gone. Um, and these grew in their place. I don't know if it's because somebody was pulling so hard but uh, I'm sure he's happy that he's expired ported bit a lot of uh, people use and the reins are attached here so when we say whoa it actually opens the horse's mouth um, so his, his mouth can't even accommodate this uh, every horse has a different size in here you know some have higher pallets than others this horse is actually higher than his uh, the other problem we lot run into with a snaffle bit is hitting this is a little bitty one but it hits the roof of the mouth. Here we have double twisted wire. I have clients that have ponies that use this. Uh, he's busted out to me demonstrating this can hit the roof of his mouth when we're trying to rate his speed. You know, this is off center on two points on purpose to cause more pain. Like one is not enough that maybe if we add two and poke him in the roof of his mouth in two places you know, uh, and this is looks wider than his mouth. Uh, to show you what one that hasn't been breached looks like, this is how thin that is. Um, this hasn't been breached by a bit, and so this is how he came. All right, and it's very, very thin. Okay, um, so what qualifies us as riders? I've been riding my whole life, um, what qualifies me to put, to control my horse with metal in his mouth? 
I don't think I'll ever feel qualified to uh, steer my horse with metal. And even though I use bits most of my life, that's because I didn't know what this looked like, okay? So how many horses have to put up with beginner riders trying to steer them via metal? They have their hands on ends of reins. They don't know what they're doing. They're yanking and pulling, okay? How would you would like going to a uh, surgeon who, uh, you know, watched a few videos and he wants to start practicing medicine, okay? Would you go to a surgeon who just hung a shingle out and let him practice medicine on you? Um, how about a dentist? A dentist, you go into a dentist's office and just the stress of being there and knowing there's going to be metal implements in your mouth, your heart rate's going up, you're stressed, um, and you get Novocaine, okay? And you're still uh, have a lot of anxiety wondering what this guy with this metal tools are going to, is he going to cause you, what kind of pain is he going to cause you? And you can say, hey, I need more Novocaine, okay? These guys, when they scream out, in pain, we don't recognize that. A horse can't verbally scream, okay? Horses are stoic and put up with a lot of pain. Uh, so if you have soft hands and your horse is okay with your bit, that's fine. How many horses do we see that are swishing their tail? They're grinding their teeth. The tongue's hanging out to the side. They're foaming at the mouth because um, they're having a hard time breathing because they have an airway obstruction because we got them cranked back here. Okay, um, when I've seen horses with major injuries, they can have an eyeball hanging out, they can have a laceration on their chest, uh, they can have a broken leg and it's just hanging there by a thread. And you can go buy them and, you know, unfortunately I've seen them feed lots and you can go buy them and they're like, no, it's not that bad. They don't seem like they're in pain having major injuries, but yet when they're being ridden, any you go to any horse show, any event where people are riding their horses with bits and you see them expressing pain. You don't have to be a rocket scientist to notice that horse is in pain. He's saying, hey, you're hurting me. But most people just want to tie their mouth shut or continue doing what they're doing. What qualifies us to think that we can control a horse with a piece of metal in his mouth? Okay. Um, they're highly sensitive animals. The outside of their nose is sensitive. I've heard people say, well, I see people jerking on a horse's face in a bitless bridle. Hey, I'd rather have a dull uh, piece of equipment on my face than uh, like a dentist with a sharp tool or something that's dull. Uh, if you had a choice, which would you pick? So I'm just here. I'm not trying to make you feel bad. I just want to educate people, and I wish I had been educated about what this looks like. And um, I'm going to have another video um, what the how the bit can affect the horse's breathing and where you're going. So thank you for your time. Thank you for watching.